I suppose I should get all the kit out of the bag then, shouldn't I? Cool, let's start the video, shall we? Hey YouTube, my name is John Sparkman. I am a wedding photographer based in the UK. I also do a couple of other kind of uh, photography video things. If you like that kind of jazz, stick around. Today we're going to be unpacking and then repacking my big roller bag for what I use in weddings in 2019. So as you can tell, I do have quite a fair bit of kit. Uh, I don't actually use all of it on a wedding day. Weddings are mainly about being able to prepare for literally everything. So I do have one piece of everything that, you know, if the situation arises. As a bit of a backstory, I've been using Canon gear for the past, oh, I don't know, seven years. But in March just gone, I switched my camera setup to Fujifilm. First, I just bought one and had a kind of Canon and Fuji mixed together. And then I sold that other Canon and now go Fuji and Fuji. It makes it a lot easier on the post-processing, colour matching. First off, before we start going through what I have in the bag, I just want to talk about what the bag I have is. This is the bag I use for weddings, I use it for everything. As you can see, the cat sleeps on it as well, so it's a very um, multi-purpose kind of bag. This is the Roller 70 by Manfrotto. It's a huge bag with, ooh, let's get it, handle at the back, handles on the side handle on the bottom and a little pocket on the side for you know little things the main reason why I like this bag whew, it's heavy come on there we go is the sheer size of what you can put inside I noticed as soon as I opened this actually that the soundproofing in my room drastically improved I should really talk like this to camera all the time this is probably what you're waiting for though the content that goes inside it I'm gonna use this chance to uh, put all the stuff back in the bag in the right order uh, normally after weddings I just mess around and just chuck everything back in hope I've taken everything before I have to travel a couple of hundred miles back home so the XT3 I'm using is the black edition and that is with the 18 to 55 kit lens the 2.8 to 4 variable stabilized uh, but this is an absolutely superb camera that I'm using here. So this one is the Fuji X-T20. Uh, it's a mirrorless mid-range camera. Uh, and on the front is probably the best lens that I could use for weddings or portraits. It's the 56mm 1.2 or the 85mm in equivalent lenses. And this lens is absolutely phenomenal. I do actually use this now at 1.2. Really good for isolating subjects, really good for getting range so you don't have to be so close to them. It is fat, it's a huge chunky little lens. You can see the light. There you go, look at that. Just see the light get in it. Fantastic lens, um, couldn't be without it. Normally I will dual wield two cameras. I will have the X-T3 and the X-T20 and this will be on one of them at all times throughout the day. That's how important this one is. It has to be in your bag if you are a Fuji wedding photographer. Um, I'm not gonna bother talking about the condition here. There's a metal one, there's a bit that comes off and a ring for aperture. I disabled that ring for aperture. Um, in a future video I'll talk about the settings I use for weddings. We have batteries. The bane of a mirrorless life is the amount of batteries that you need. So I have some good, some Amazon ones, a new mower. Got these red ones just because they were red and they look fun. They're fine. I, you know, I, I use the Fujifilm one with these. I can put them together in battery packs and save yourself 40 50 pounds of battery uh, and get yourself like 10 because you'll need them we have the fuji xt3 grip which i've already done a video on unbox unboxing this thing is superbly awesome it's a really nice and well built piece of kit can give you an extra two batteries so two plus one in the camera gives you three and then you're looking at about a thousand plus pictures kind of per uh, load i guess pop the little hole and you can put an AC adapter in, so if you're having a quiet moment during a wedding, just stick the entire camera on charge. Only these two batteries inside here will charge, not the one on the camera. To go to the side of that, in my bag, I have a tiny little Pixie, Pixie Pro, I think they're called. Just a very simple ball head. These are very cheap, which is nice. So pick one up for yourself. It can't hold too much. That will bend kind of after about a kilogram or so maybe two kilograms of force. 
but absolutely fine to hold maybe a flash gun or just a camera with a, a basic lens. Let us go to the 23mm f2 prime lens. This is the one I bought alongside the Fuji X-T3 when I picked it up. A tiny little lens, 35mm equivalent. This I will interchange with the kit lens um, at kind of weddings and events. Uh, if I just want a more kind of a room shot, if I you know I want to see everything but in low light at the same time, or you know if my back's getting tired, I've already taken 2,000 shots and it's been 10 hours, I slap this on that Fuji X-T3, I take everything off, the flashes go, everything, I have a nice little handheld. To go alongside that in the lens category compartment uh, are these tiny little Mika macro rings. Really handy, a 10mm and a 16mm at the front. Uh, the 10mm I would say is good for close-up details of flowers. 16mm rings, so that's the kind of distance we're going. Um, at a wedding I did in September, I combined them both together and got some detail of the inside inscription inside a wedding ring. That they, they had writing on the inside and they wanted they were just like, oh can you just take a photo where they're both in focus where you can read the writing on both? I was like, sure, yeah, no problem. Prepare for everything. I, I used to have a macro lens for the Canon setup, but for 350 quid compared to what this is 12 pounds. These do the same job. Moving on a little bit, I have an obscure lens I added to the collection. This is a very old uh, 100mm prime lens from Nikon. Uh, 105mm f2.5, I think. It was my dad's. It was lying around. I, I didn't actually have to pay for it. Uh, and on the bottom, there is a KNF Concept Nikon to Fuji adapter. This gives me range. So if I'm not allowed at the front of a wedding, this equates to about 150mm 2.5. The adapter was like £20, so you know, for something that was lying around, I thought it'd be good to throw in the bag. I barely use it. It's nice to know that I have that range forward if I do need to get, you know, some super telephoto shots. I think I'm running out of camera stuff, so we're about to go down to the accessories, which I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering exactly what I have and exactly what the huge pile here is about. The most important thing that I carry with us now are some flash guns. These are the straightforward Yongnyo 560 Mark III's. So there's a newer one out now, but these are manual controlled flashes with kind of transceiver receivers built in. Uh, and on the top, these big ear things, these are MagMod uh, adapters. I have them on both. I have a B and a C. Uh, the A broke. So <laughs> I haven't got around to relabeling these and regrouping them on the, um, on the trigger. So these are great. These are about £40 each. You can go wild, but I use two for now. Two is absolutely adequate for myself. And we couple it with the trigger that they have. Um, I forget the name of this too blacked out the name on the back of it because it's kind of a bit glaring and bright when you're trying to take photos at night or in the dark. It's, it says just Yongyo in massive writing, so that got covered pretty quick. That sits on top of my camera. They control the flashes which are on stands um, and I can really shape the light and do what I want. On the subject of shaping, I now pretty much exclusively use MagMod. Um, MagMod I'm going to do a video about in the future. They're a really great and simple solution to modifying your flashes. Once you put these big ears on your flashes, you can get a variety of different kind of adapters made of kind of a silicon uh, with magnets built in. You know, they fold them flat and stick them in your bag, absolutely tiny, and they'll just pop back. Um, and they are super easy just to fit. So we just get the flash straight on. Nice and easy. Uh, you can use a combination of these to really good effect. So you can get a grid, which controls light, slap that on. You can get yourself um, an orange gel, which will which will match the you know the lighting of a um, tungsten lighting or indoor lighting of a, an event. But check out one of my other videos on explaining the differences and the adapters that are used for MagMod. Another really good advantage of these is that a lot of these will just stick together. And save me, squish that down, save me a load of space in the bag as well uh, compared to the traditional kind of flash modifiers, the Rogue Benders and the Gary Fongs. I've got a, a Lambency diffuser up there somewhere. Some more additions to the Mag Model line. Got the gel wallet, the spare gels. 
So like that, so I've got greens and reds and creative ones and ND ones and basically pop whatever you want in, change the colour of your light, match it, contrast it, do something creative. Right at the back is this little uh, chef's hat, light bulb kind of thing. Uh, this is the Mag Bounce, this is just a huge bounce card, you pop it on top of your flash, flash goes up and then it goes forwards, you like that? Flash goes up and forwards and it enlarges the light from uh, you know this big to this big. Um, have that off camera, have it on camera, look like a weirdo with a, a thing on their head. Double A batteries, don't really need to explain. I try and keep them in these little pack things, a pack of four. Um, I would charge about 20 double A's for a wedding and then I'll just stow the fresh ones in little packs of four. The tiny little Fuji EFX8 pop-up flash, it's the one that doesn't require any power and it just sits on top of your camera and you know, you'll never know when you actually need this. Of course, if you've got an XT20 or something with a pop-up flash, it's obsolete. Got one of these small little spud micro cloth things. It just, uh, let's get into the super accessories. So we start with the three-legged thing punks. I think it's the Viv. Uh, it's one of the first ones that they made. Uh, it's uh, kind of a, a metal one. It's not carbon fiber, so it's pretty heavy. I do like it. I am considering getting a new one, maybe a carbon fiber one. The outside legs, you know, this last one's a bit flimsy. Uh, if you've got the entire thing extended, the camera, you can kind of push down on the top and it springs down a little bit. This doesn't extend very high, but it is a really good tripod to go low. It's, it's good for a bit of stability here and there. This here is the Holdfast Moneymaker. It is a camera strap system. You just go over your shoulders and have two cameras down by your hips and it really saves the pressure on your neck during a big event or wedding. This will outlast everything else that I have. Uh, it's lasted me three years already. Uh, it's getting a bit worn from the dark colors that I wear. You know, for weddings, it's getting a bit black on some parts. This will save your back and your health in the long run. So I would advise some kind of dual strap. These are about 300 pounds once you import them, so they're not cheap. Um, and whatever you do, do not lose the little adapters. These go into the tripod kind of mount of your camera and that hooks onto these kind of bits down here really but uh, I keep that just folded up in thirds like this and in my bag and I just pop it out on my shoulders and uh, less back pain I wouldn't say no back pain I always back pain at weddings I'm 30 now so I'm, I'm starting to feel everything wrist strap and it matches I've even got uh, it's triple yeah you go triple mustard today um, this was made by a lovely guy in Cheltenham where I used to live, the Four Thirds Camera Strap Company. You find him on Etsy and uh, you can just pop it on and off if you have a little split ring on your main camera. Rocket blower, friction arm. Literally just a metal arm which you can lock down in the middle and it basically stops all movement. This becomes solid, this becomes solid. You can clamp anything to anything with this. You can clamp that to a table or a pole or whatever you want and then you can put a flash on the end or you can put a microphone on the end if you're doing video. Um, or you can you know, put it on your tripod and have another attachment coming out the side. And you know, I've done weddings where I didn't even take a light stand because I just found something I could put a flash on and just put that with it. Um, you know, it's about the same size as the folded up tripod so I just put them next to each other in the bag and you never know you never know plastic bags because rain um, if you want to do a rain shot and you want to backlight the rain you put your flash out you put your flash in the bag so it doesn't get destroyed bungee cord thing this is these ones are quite handy for just bundling up light stands so you can just pick them all up in one go and just walk to the car on a, a late rainy wedding night or something memory cards in a Waterproof, bomb-proof case. These are a couple of pounds on Amazon. Just pick yourself one up. Uh, the cards I use are a mix of the old-school Transcend cards, which were like my first cards. Um, I kind of don't want to get rid of them, but I know that they're pretty terrible. Uh, and the cards I use for everything else, which is the Extreme Sandisk Gold ones. Um, I've got two in the camera there. I've got one in the camera down there. Got one spare, uh, all 32 gigabytes or above. Uh, really handy, never had a failed card ever. We are nearly getting there. We have a power adapter. Nearly always got power in it. I've charged this once every year. Got some phone chargers and some micro USB chargers in the back as well. This is a GoPro 7 Black in the basic Amazon case. 
uh, good for dual shooting video and photos together. There's a couple of people like Taylor Jackson, for instance, a, a very good Canadian uh, wedding photographer, who suggests that you should be able to shoot video and photo together at a wedding, and then you can sell them the package kind of afterwards. But this is the one game changer. This is a paparazzi bracket, sits under your camera, so you put your camera here, put your flash, or most importantly, your GoPro here, and you can dual shoot at the same time from the same angle I get, from the same angle. Shoot photo and video together. How mad is that? You just press one button, you'd be blasting away. When you've got your, your camera up, it's already in the same orientation. Alongside the GoPro, we have one more. This is the Peter McKinnon inspired EDC everyday carry bag. These are little, tiny little bags. You can just uh, pick up on Amazon for a couple of pounds. All it is is a, a place you can store stuff. I'll go through this in another video, but this helps for weddings. It's designed just for weddings, realistically, with the kid inside of it. Flash handle or flash bracket, you know, you put your camera on top of here and you put your flash up on here. This I use, another throwback to Taylor Jackson, the wedding photographer. Put the GoPro on here, aim it kind of a little bit at your camera and a little bit forwards. You can take your own behind the scenes videos with it. Uh, great for social proof when you're trying to do some marketing online you can go hey look this is actually how I interact with couples uh, you look a bit stupid and you kind of got a, a you know an adapter going up your face here and that concludes my setup that that is everything inside my camera bag for 2019 any questions come on back and uh, pop by the channel and I hope to answer anything in the comments if you can think of any suggestions or kit that you add or you think I should add to my collection just leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. See you in the next video.